We're here today with something a little bit different. We want to give you some information on fastener basics. Aaron, let's start today with bolts and hex head captures. Yeah, that's a good subject, so let's get into it. <laughs> I, uh, one thing I always love to ask people this question okay. is what is the difference between a bolt and a screw? A difference between a bolt and a screw. This is a very common one we get all the time. Sure, yeah, <laughs> So see it all the time. Let's talk about that. So a bolt, what is the intended use of a bolt? It's to go through two components, right? We're fastening two components together. So to go through two components and you put a nut on the back side. Right. Now, the important thing is the proper way to assemble is to rotate the nut. Okay. Now, when you think about that, then this is just being held steady. So we have no bearing surface, really frictional forces we're concerned about there. That's being held. It's the nut that's rotating. So therefore, for a bolt, the underhead bearing surface is not critical. Right. So bolt specifications are written kind of loose uh, as to what the surface condition has to be. Body and, diameter is a little different. And the body diameter. And the length and, is the biggest one. And the length is also different. So the length is a little bit more tolerance and the body diameter is more tolerance. The body diameter of the bolt is a plus or minus tolerance. So that is the basics of a bolt. The screw, on the other hand, the screw is intended to go into, through one piece of material and into a threaded hole. Or to create one, but in this case, as we're talking about hex heads, you're going to have a tapped hole. You have a tapped hole. So that's its intended use, is to go into then a tapped hole. Now, we're rotating the head of the screw, therefore, the bearing surface here, the frictional forces, are important. So what they've done is they've design, designed what we call a bearing ring. And so the surface finish of that is also designated as critical. The perpendicularity is more critical. The fillet Body radius is more critical. Is more critical. And the length tolerance is more and critical. And the length tolerance yeah. is more critical and the body diameter. So the body diameter on a screw only has a minus tolerance. Now, think about this. So Aaron, is this a bolt or a screw? Well, I'd have to measure it to ensure that it is, but I think that's a screw. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. This, what I have in my hand right here, was manufactured as a screw. Now, can I put a nut on here and use this as a bolt? You can. Absolutely, yep. yes. Now, can I take a bolt with its loose tolerances on the body diameter, the head, and use it as a screw? Not necessarily. Maybe probably shouldn't do that. So you can use a screw as a bolt, but you shouldn't necessarily use a bolt as a screw. Let's talk about the difference between length measurement of an all-thread stud in terms of the ASME specification. Yeah, and it's even further defined within that standard. That's ASME B18.31.2. You've got a couple of different types. You've got the continuous thread. Correct and the flange type. So tell us first about that continuous thread. Okay, continuous threaded studs as defined by the ASME specification are measured in length from extreme end to extreme end. Yep. You will have a chamfer that is uh, inside the length measurement before your threads start. Extreme end to extreme end on what's defined as a continuous threaded stud. Exactly right. And then when we talk about the flange type, that is going to be the first fully formed thread mm -hmm. to the next to last fully formed thread there. Yeah. So it's right, it's with the other side of that is going to be your chamfer. So that is where you actually measure that length for a flange type stud. Correct. So your chamfers are outside the length. So full thread, and that's full formed thread, by the way. Full formed thread to full form thread. First thread to first thread is also what they define it as in the ASTM specifications. Yeah, they actually do. So A193 and A320 both derive that if you're using a flange type stud, right. it should be first to first. First thread to first thread. So get that right, follow the ASTM and ASME specifications. Aaron, we're gonna talk about proper length measurement on a hex head cap screw or a bolt. There are five basic measurements that you need to know. Yep, covered in ASME B18.2.1. Correct. 
Um, the first one we'll talk about is the overall length. Correct. And how to actually measure that. So that's going to be from the bearing surface all the way to the end of the bolt or screw. Correct. In this case, that's underneath the head. Yep. And then you have LB. Okay. Or body length, right? Body length. So LB, again, from the bearing surface, in this case, underneath the head, to the full diameter of the body and where that full diameter of the body begins to taper off. Yep. So full body diameter, the length of that. Yep. That's a, and that little space right in between there, that's a transition length. Correct. Right? Which then leads us into the grip length, which grip length is LG on our little chart here. Right. And that is noting the maximum material that you can actually use that screw or bolt in. Maximum thickness of material. Yep. So the way they measure that is they run a thread gauge as far as it will go. And then they will measure the distance between the end of the thread gauge or the flat of the thread gauge against the bearing surface. That distance is your LG length grip. Now there is a transition in between here and that's the difference between your LB body length and your LG grip length. Which is a reference dimension. That is correct. Right, and then the last one we have left over, what is it? Thread length. Thread length. So that is a leftover. So LB, LG are your primaries. The thread length is your leftover. Proper way to measure the length of a hex head cap screw or a bolt. Aaron, head markings. Today we're gonna to talk about the grade markings or the head markings on a hex head cap screw. Yeah, so we're gonna talk specifically about inch series. Okay. And th those common grades, which we're covering in SAE, the Society of Automotive Engineers. Correct. S the specification is J429. Yeah, I love to ask people, grade two, grade five, grade eight, where does that come from? It comes out of the automotive industry. It does. Yes, SAE. So on a grade two, now these are your common grades. SAE does cover some other grades. So we're going to do the common ones, grade two, grade five, grade eight. On grade two, there is really no required grade marking. You will see the manufacturer's insignia. Yep, that's but a minimum requirement. Other, other than that, it's blank. So grade five, Aaron, what do we have? We will have three radial lines marked on the head of the screw. Correct. And then I love this one on grade eight. I ask this to engineers all the time in classes. And I'll go, what's the head marking on a grade eight? And it's universally, they'll say grade five. Well, I don't know why they get five, but it's wrong, isn't it? Right, it's actually six radial lines. It's six radial lines, exactly. So grade two, none, grade five, three, and grade eight is six, okay? Metric system. Yep, that's a little bit different. That's ISO mm -hmm. 898. They did something kind of cool. So what they did, is they came up with what they call property classes. Mm -hmm. And you'll see property class as an example, 8.8, 10.9, 12.9. Now, you know what that stands for? What does the eight stand for? The eight uh -huh. is the overall strength of that specific screw mm -hmm. being 800 megapascals. That's right, yeah. so 800 megapascals. So there it is, an eight. Now we have a 0.8, the 0.8 gives you the yield strength. So it's that 0.8 stands for 80% of the tensile, 800 megapascals, is your yield, 10.9. A thousand megapascals tensile, 0.9, 90% of that is yield. Yep. Then what do they do? They put exactly that on the head of the fastener. How intelligent is that? So that's pretty cool. So you can look at the head of a metric fastener and see the 8.8 .8 go 800 megapascals, 80% of that is my yield. So really easy to remember, excellent done on the metric system. So remember your grade markings and what they stand for is your strength and property class of the fastener. <laughs>